are talking about oil paints. What it consists of, how we work with it, as if we know nothing. First of all, I want to talk about surface that you're going to mix your paint on. Use a flat surface. In this case, I am using a tile. It's a very smooth tile uh, with a light color so that when I mix my colors, I can actually see the color. Um, I also use a glass. This comes out of um, a fridge. It's a glass that was in a fridge. So what I do is I put it down with a light surface at the bottom and then I can take the subject matter and perhaps put the subject matter at the bottom and then mix my colors and get per the perfect color there. But that's just an option. It's not um, compulsory. Another surface is a tear off palette. If you go to class at back or you are an artist that move around, this is a perfect thing to get. You just tear this off, fold it up neatly and then throw it away. You get different textures, different thickness. Um, this one you can reuse, it's more plasticky effect and then you get thinner ones as well from a art shop. Right, first of all, what is the difference between oil paint and acrylic? Acrylic is a water base. Oil is an oil base. Inside these tubes there's oil. So if I open a new tube, you'll find that there's some oil lying next to the paint. Be glad about it. Sometimes when we open it and there's a lot of oil coming out, be, like I say, be glad about it because if it doesn't have oil in it, it becomes a very hard tube and you can't um, use the paint inside because it's actually too dry. There's one thing that I need to make sure you understand first of all. If we paint a bathroom, for instance, or a kitchen, we paint a first layer of PVA and on top of the PVA, we will put enamel. The moment we've added enamel, we cannot go back and add PVA over that. So always remember that oil goes on top of PVA. So oil goes on top of acrylic. You cannot put acrylic on top of oil. So um, we will call that a mixed medium. That's a completely different um, scenario, different lesson. I'll get into that. But as long as you know that you can work with oil on top of acrylics and not the other way around. Right. So I've got a couple of oils here and I want to explain to you, if you buy oils, what to look for. There's different makes here. I've got a Dollar Rani, I've got a Winton uh, Color and I've got uh, also a Dollar Rani. It looks different than this one, but, and then a Winton and Newton. So Winton and Windsor and Newton is not the same make, even though it says Winton Oil Color. I'm always confused, but anyway. So when I walk into an art shop, I want to look at the actual quality of the paint. So if I look at this paint here, this is this is a lemon yellow. And if I read the paint the paint tube correctly, it gives me the name. Um, and then there's little three stars there and a white little block and number. That is the number of the paint range. We can carry on. That's the color of the name, the the when it's made and so forth. But what I'm interested in is that little square there. In comparison with that little square there. And I've got the same square there. So what does this mean? We're talking about opacity, um, how opaque and how transparent the paint will be. Meaning if I paint, does this gonna cover a lot or is that gonna cover a lot? The moment the block is complete like that, it's a full block, then it's a full opacity, meaning it covers completely. This is a half opacity and that is transparent. So sometimes when we paint, especially when we paint white, um, we feel that it doesn't cover. So this white that I've got here is a full opacity. That's, that's why I love titanium white. And I will look like, look at the full opacity so that it covers the paint. You can mix different types of paints with each other as long as it's oil paints. Don't go and mix um, acrylics. So keep your acrylics completely different, uh, separate, I mean, from your oil paints.
We're going to look at the primary colors. I've got two yellows, I'll explain. I've got two reds and I've got two blues. Right? Then I've got a black and I've got a white. A black and white. This is the only colors that we are going to use. It is a cadmium yellow, a lemon yellow, a permanent crimson, so it's a, a, a lizard and crimson, they also call it, and a cadmium red. Then we've got French ultramarine and cobalt blue. That is our primary colors. Then we're gonna mix white and black. Black is the end of color, white is the beginning of color. So these colors are not really counting, but it plays a very big role into mixing our paints. Before we carry on, I want to show you to come, just to stay back uh, on how to buy paint. Um, I've got a lemon yellow and a lemon yellow U pale and a cadmium yellow U. So if I open this, if I look at lemon yellow, and I look at lemon yellow U, the U means there's another color added to this. So you must try not to get paints that says U, but those paints is a different price range. If you understand how the U works, then you can compromise by mixing the correct colors and add and you know add more blue, add more red. Just want to show you the difference between the two. Um, the eye, to the eye, it looks exactly the same. See, there's the oils I was talking about. So to the eye, it looks exactly the same, but the one has got more blue in it, and the one does not. It's, got, it's more a pure color. If we look at it this way, it kind of wants to look the same, but it's not the same. Right, so that's why we're talking about you. So there is French ultramarine, no you. There's a cobalt blue with you. It's a much cheaper paint than a, a pure primary. First, I want to explain to you about warm colors and cool colors. Warm colors, if you think about a fire, a fire has got oranges and reds and those type of colors, and that's warm colors. Cold colors is water. It is your light greens, your blues, and so forth. So if I open the two tubes, like I've done there, I want you to see the difference between the colors. I'm gonna push out some more. Let's take that one and that one next to each other. Right, if I look at those two colors, I can see that that color there has got more red in it. So it's more orangey than that one. So let's say that one's got more red in it, that one has got more blue in it. So the red, the cadmium yellow is the warm color where the lemon yellow is cold color. If we look at the two reds, we're talking about crimson and cadmium red. So if I open my crimson and I compare it to the cadmium red, you can also see the difference. The difference is this one is not just darker, but it's got blue in it and that one's got more red in it. So this is a cool color and that is a warm. Right, so we've got the cobalt blue and we've got the French ultramarine. It kind of wants to look close to each other, but it's not. That one has got more blue in it and this one's got more yellow in it. So this is a, um, this is a cool color, this is a warm color. So when we do the color chart, which is also on a different video, when we do the color chart, we will mix the cool colors together and the warm colors together for a chart. And we're going to only use these colors with a black and a white. I want you to understand what oils does, what is cool colors, what is warm colors, what is opacity, what is transparency, and that type of thing. Right. Inside oil, we've got raw linseed oil. In my container here, I've got raw linseed oil. It comes from a hardware store. I've used this for many years. It did not color my paints, does not. I've been painting for over 21 years and my paintings has never ever gone yellow. Um, this is turpentine. You can use a lot of artist turpentine, artist medium from a hardware store. I use ordinary turpentine. The ordinary turpentine, you get odorless turpentine, but the ordinary turpentine doesn't smell as much as artist turpentine. Um, but that's also a personal choice. 
artist turpentine is very expensive whereas the turpentine from a hardware store you know it evaporates and so forth but it's always a good idea to work with a ventilated ventilation area but a palette knife there are three different palette knives different, um, different sizes and ones are steel and the ones are plastic there's nothing wrong with a plastic one i have just broken so many in my my art career um, that i don't always use it if i really don't have this because this is so nice and flexible right um, this is less flexible just because it's small but if i work with a small canvas i will mix this and if i mix a little bit of paint i would rather use this okay do not use a palette that you use for watercolors those round ones with the small little containers because we need to mix the paint um, on a surface like we will ice cake when we talk about canvases we get different types of canvases also price does matter this is a panel artboard meaning um, they have taken the a masonite board and they stretch canvas over that stick it on with glue and then they gessoed it this is a box canvas the box canvas needs doesn't need to be framed immediately you can hang it on your wall like this so um, also price does matter don't go for the cheapest canvas the cheapest canvas is not properly gessoed and it just gives you the you, you kind of question your own ability because it feels like it doesn't grab the paint so when you start off rather go for a little bit more expensive canvas and so when I open the canvas I take I go to the back of the board I take my palette knife just do that open the plastic like that if I can get it open it's not yeah there you go and then you just so do not do this at the, the front of your canvas because it will leave a mark on your canvas so take the plastics off right now i'm going to use an ordinary paintbrush i'll explain different paint brushes later on and i want to explain to you what's the difference between a long color and a short color I am going to take a little bit of linseed oil and put it in a small container, just really a little bit. You don't want to plonk your whole paintbrush in a deep um, deep volumes and not know how much paint you've got on. Right, so I've got this canvas prepared and I've got it. Uh, a tissue paper you can use an old drag as well there's some of my old drags um, I don't I throw it in the, the washing and it comes out like this it's not dirty but I don't throw it away all the time so I can use this as well so I'm gonna take what I did here was I added 50% linseed oil with 50% of turpentine just mix this um, nicely and don't throw too much because if you put your paintbrush in there you don't want to fill the whole paintbrush with the liquid just a little bit but I'll show you when we work with no medium we call this medium I'm gonna take my paintbrush fill it on both sides and I am going to drag it right down this is what we call a short color meaning I did not put any medium with that. Now I'm going to take a little bit of medium, plonk it next to that. You can see that's a lot of medium. Take the same amount of red and now I'm going to do exactly the same and you'll see that that is a long color. So the difference between the two is because there's no medium in there, it doesn't really fill. It doesn't fill the texture of the canvas. There it fills the texture of the canvas. Be aware that I cannot teach you how much linseed oil you need to use or how much medium you've got to use. Therefore, this exercise so that you can determine and get used to the fact that when to use medium and when not, right? This little tissue paper is to wipe off your brush every time. So, 
short color, long color. And this exercise, I would like you to do this exercise. Let's make, yeah, you know, one is enough. Right. I am going to explain what we mean about lay in color. We lay color next to each other and we marry color. So let's make a very nice red shape. I'm gonna take this without any medium. I am going to take my paintbrush and lay in some of the color on the sides. A little bit more, just using one color for now. I did not use any medium. I used my paintbrush kind of on both sides to get the paint transferred from my paintbrush to my canvas. Take a little bit more. Add that in. Now I'm going to take a little bit of linseed oil medium and I'm going to plonk it onto my tissue paper. And I'm going to start blending. That's too much. Come back again and pick that up. And now I'm working on the edge so that the edge is really nicely filled in so that it doesn't ha so that it has a sharp edge and I'm going to bring this in like that right now I'm gonna clean my brush just on my tissue paper I'm not taking a, a, a different brush it's still the same brush Take some white, and now I'm gonna, with the same brush, grab some white, no medium, and add my white there. And if the area allows me to, I'll go cross, 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 cross. We're not painting like we paint a house. We go cross, cross, cross for the simple reason that I need the paint to be transported from the paintbrush to the canvas. Right, now what's going to happen is we have laid in color, now we're going to marry the colors. The red is going to become lighter and the light, the, the white is going to become pinkish, right? So I'm going to wipe my brush and now we're working with a dry sort of brush. So wipe all this off and I'm going to take this and I kind of go zigzagging over the two. Just to blend that in. Zigzag, zigzag, zigzag. I want my highlight to sit there. So now I'm gonna grab some red again and I'm gonna work on the edges. No medium yet. Medium is dangerous if you don't understand it from the beginning. So work this in. A little bit more red. Right, you can see that if I take this and I work there, it's gonna light it up. We don't want to do that. We want to keep this ball as red as possible and just use it the white as a highlight. Now I'm going to grab more red, both sides of my paintbrush and I'm going to work this into that area. Still no linseed oil yet, just work it in. And blend that so we are marrying those colors. I want to keep that. Now my brush has got a lot of red, I'm wiping off my brush like that and I'm just gonna lightly work with that over there. So what I'm doing is just touching that color on top. I'm actually moving the red right over the white area there. Okay, now if I add more red to the edges, I want that to be pushed quite back. I am going to take, I'm gonna just clean my brush, I'm gonna take a little bit of blue and I work the blue into my red so the shadows there will become a purple but your eye won't tell you that it's purple, it will still tell you that it's a red. So I'm just bringing that in, I'm gonna take a little bit of linseed oil, always put it on my 
tissue paper and work that in. If I use too much linseed oil, it will thin it out too much. So there we get some contrasting color. If I feel it's too much blue, I come back with red on my paintbrush and work that in. And that's a continuous um, changing of paintbrush, changing of color and working that into your subject matter. If I feel I've got too much paint on my brush, I just wipe it off and I come back and I blend nicely in. And this is when I close my one eye to really see the 3D that is happening here. So I want you to practice this on your first canvas. Gonna go a little bit blending that slightly in. Don't wanna see the, the actual canvas. Gonna take a little bit more blue, work the blue into that. Then we have a reflected light that will sit here. Bring that in, wipe my brush and work that slightly in. You can change your brush smaller if you want to. I always say that the, um, the bigger the brush, the better. I'm gonna take some blue, work that into that area there so that my reflected light always bounces back again on my surface. And this might take you a while, it looks easy, but you've got, this exercise is extremely important for you to not just handle your paintbrush, but also understand the medium, how to mix those colors to really get your 3D component here. So I'm just gonna bring my highlight in there and I'm going to combine that color. So what I'm showing you is you've got to use your palette knife to pick up your color mix it in do not mix it with your paintbrush because what happens is the paint goes right at the back of your paintbrush and you're not just wasting your paint you are not getting the result you want so i'm going to work for my palette knife because there's a nice purple on there just to work some surface in here bring this around see i haven't touched the medium yet a little bit more purple so I can just grab a little bit of red in there. So I've laid in my color, clean my brush, take a little bit of linseed, uh, medium, and make sure that I get that edge nice and crisp so that there's no canvas sticking out there. This exercise will teach you how to Control your brush. And understand how much medium you've got to use and which not. So do that. For now, you can do different colors as well. We've got yellow out. Yellow and red give you nice orange. And so forth. Right, so that's the first exercise. Palette knife and clean your paintbrush. Take your cloth, throw away your dirty tissue paper. Let's talk about our brushes. I've placed a container here with ordinary turpentine. Um, I've got my clean paper towel and we're gonna discuss these brushes. The first brush that is my go-to brush is my background brush. Most of my paintings I do only with this brush. Fine detail, everything, but that comes with experience. We will use this brush to do the background. A full background, a full wash. Uh, when we do the first painting, we'll explain to you the whole idea about the wash uh, to get rid of the white glare of the canvas. There's a saying that says, the scariest thing for an artist is a white canvas. Therefore, we just paint the white away when we start with our project or our art masterpiece, right? Um, 
This is a fine liner, if I can call it that. With this brush, you plonk it into your turpentine or your mixture, sorry, your linseed oil mixture. You take your paint brush and you turn it around like this. Make sure it's nicely filled and then you can do fine lines with that by, if you press hard, it's going to give you a hard line. If you lift it up, it's going to give you a very fine line. I'm just going to go back there again. So it's either a fine line or a thick line or a fine line or a thick line. So that is if you're really scared and you want to work on fine detail around a project. Right? Um, again, your, your paintbrush, you can turn around because there's a lot of paint in there um, to use this for, for fine areas. Um, I think that is more, it's explanatory. So that's the one brush. I'm going to plonk it into my turpentine. Um, just to get back to this brush, if I work with this, I work cross, 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 cross. Cross for this, for the simple reason that we've got paint on both sides of the brush and we just want to transfer it onto your canvas. One thing to remember, if I paint and I fill my paintbrush with paint and I... Um, lay my first color if i carry on at the same place i'm actually going to lift the color so be careful you lay your color in and um, fill it with paint again um, so you don't lift the paint off the, the paintbrush this is a full bit brush and um, the difference between those two is this is a flat i call it a flat flat brush this is a round flat brush whereas this my new little one is a round, round brush. You see, it's round, round. So this is a flat round. This is a flat, flat brush. Um, this is a, a dollar roundy brush. It's also a flat, round brush, but very tiny. So I can do a lot with this. I can really go very fine lines, or I can work a little bit more with texture with this paintbrush so it's got a, it's a very nice brush to use this one we'll use for for stippling like that it's nice with um, your trees and that type of thing if I take this brush as well I'm using the same color now the purple I can push this brush up like that to help me with either grass or shrubs that type of thing and um, fill my brush both sides bring it in so remember now i'm working with little medium so it's a short color the moment i add a little bit of linseed oil fill my brush it gives me a complete different texture because it's a longer color now if i carry on working on the same area i'm going to fill the canvas completely and then you don't really see texture so be careful that you don't overwork your, um, your texture. I can take this brush and also just lift up like that. Just flick it up like that for a little bit more texture. So this is a very handy brush. It's a very cheap brush. Um, but it does, has its purpose. This brush is what I've used to do this exercise. I especially selected the one that's round like this. So that when I work on a circular effect, that the hair of the brush actually assists me for not dumping out of the, the circle, if you know what I'm saying. Whereas if I use this one, those hair on the corner could have jumped out and then I had to work on that edge. Right, so this brush also has a very nice purpose. It's, a, it's also a, a go-to brush for me. So if I paint... Can you see that it gives me a round effect there, where this one here gives me a square. Where that's round flat, this is square flat. You can use the same brush, very fine, like that. So it's actually finer than that. So when I want very fine lines, I don't necessarily go to the fine liner. I would rather use my paintbrush to my advantage and really decide that I can do 
better lines with that because for the reason that the amount of hair on this brush is much less than that brush so this brush transfers more paint carries more paint so that i can get to the project and do what i want and, and it, it, it it carries more paint like i said repeating myself here but um i can also use this i'm going to change my color I can also lift that up. But now you can see that because the hair is very soft in comparison to this brush, um, this hair is very soft, so it's actually filling in the areas in between, whereas this brush gives me a better texture. So, yeah, you know, you've got to select the right brush. You've got to select the right brush for what you are actually working with or working towards. Right. I can use this brush, I'm using two colors, white on the one side, let's say purple on the other side, putting it down like that, hold it, press it like this, wiggle, 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 push it up a little bit, bring it down, and there we've got a nice petal. I can take the same color, or just turn my paintbrush around, put it down there, hold it, wiggle, 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 90, 90 degrees my brush, push it up a little bit, I need that area to make a difference, bring it up and right, so yeah, you've got to learn your brushes and play with your brushes, um, don't just, don't just think that it's, that's there to paint, you know, um, the obvious, play with your brushes, um, this is a fan brush, the fan brush is very handy, I'm going to steal some of this yellow, this is very handy, especially for grass, like that now because it's a very wide brush it doesn't always go into your medium if your medium source is that small I'm going to try the same so um, if I do the same um, petals like that just see if I compare apples with apples here put the purple on the one side and the yellow on the other side it's going to be a much wider flower so I'll hold it hold it put it down push it up come back and so that's beautiful you can do a lot with this brush it's a very nice texture brush um, as we carry on and we start painting projects we will guide you to use the right brush and so forth but you'll start loving your brushes so that is just um, in a nutshell what brushes you actually need don't go out and go buy, buy all these brushes and brushes is um, a pricey the dollar roundy brushes here it lasts a long time i don't buy too expensive pay, uh, paint brushes because i like to i'm a very lazy artist so i don't always clean my brushes so i'd rather throw a brush away and buy a new one but if i did buy sable brushes where it's 2000 rand a brush surely i will look after my brush so it depends on your budget it depends on how much you want to spend on brushes you can get a um, an ordinary brush just for puffing for 800 rand depends on your budget then this is a stencil brush as we all know it um, that is if you are working with a stencil it's a flat brush and the reason for a stencil brush is that we don't want the, st the, the paint to go underneath the stencil but even though if we don't use a stencil brush I can use it as texture as well so that will give me nice texture just play around with your brushes so this is gonna make a little bit of a mess it's not a brush uh, one of my go-to brushes um, it's just a brush that I sometimes use but I it's preferred for stenciling so if you want to use it on your background and that type of thing most important brush is this brush um, I can do so much with it I can also go um, with a very thin line if I want to do a thin line, just make sure that I have got this filled in nicely so I can have a thin line there. See, so I can do a lot with this brush. I can actually work with this, you know, work on this um, sphere as well with that brush. So these are the important brushes that I use. That is the go-to brushes. Last one I want to show you is also a flat brush. A flat, flat brush. It's wider. It also does beautiful flowers like that, but this brush is a very soft brush. I keep it clean so that when I want to puff out and blend my colors on top of each other, that's exactly what I'll do. 
I try and keep this brush as clean as possible and not plonk it into my paint. It's very difficult because as you paint, you somehow go and you take paint and then your blending brush is gone or used to with paint. It needs to be a clean brush just to make sure that you blend some of your colors in. Okay, so if I'm talking about a blending brush, you don't go to an art shop and ask for a blending brush. It's just a soft, clean brush that will help you to blend some of your stuff in. Okay, so I hope, I hope that helps a lot. Uh, the next video, we will start with a nice project. I think we're going to do an apple or a cherry, just to show you exactly how to incorporate everything I just told you. So do this exercise. I would like you to send me a picture of that just so that you can associate yourself and get used to using paints. I have, I'm going to add a clip in on how to clean your brushes because I just want to mention that you can't take your brush and go clean it at a basin with water and soap. You've got to use your turpentine. Take your brush, take your brush, wipe it clean like that. Make sure it's clean. Don't that like that and put it away okay very important thing while you were busy with your your um, painting have a different container where you put the brushes in while it still has paint on don't go put it into lens, uh, turpentine and then go straight onto your painting because you'll take all the paint off again so i have a container like this if i'm still busy with my painting i just turn my paint brush upside down and just have it handy if I need different brushes like that. When I'm completely done with my project, I will then clean my paint brushes and put them away again. Right, thank you very much and um, I will update you on the next videos.